So uh, the interesting thing about AI machine learning, even though it's been around for a very long time, you know, decades, 70 years, since the, even before the beginning of computing, is that we're starting to see the use of AI machine learning to help us address some of the latest challenges in trying to move to that next wave of digital transformation, which is a bit of a buzzword in and of itself. But the idea of digital transformation is that we're trying to move from the old ways that we've done things that have inherently slowed down the interactions between enterprise enterprises and their customers, their citizens, their patients, um, moving from paper-based and human labor-based systems to systems that are much more uh, able to, to respond in real time, and that's through the power of intelligence and intelligent systems. Right, and we found that the problem is that processes are paper-based and manual, and they still rely heavily on people processes, which slows things down. And simply converting a paper document to a PDF, for example, if a human still needs to read that process, that document and that process hasn't really changed. We've just taken that paper document and put it onto a computer. So the process is just as slow and manual as it's ever been. In order to move us to, the, to actual digital transformation, that's where we need intelligent systems. Right. So it's not just that we want to make our systems necessarily mimic the behavior of humans in all their ways. It's just that there are some things we really like doing. Part of the reason why we like working with companies is we get that personal touch, that personal interaction. Well, what does it mean, that personal interaction? People are really demanding from all of their interactions, whether it's with their retail establishments, with their hospitals, with their government agencies. They're demanding real time, always on on demand instant access, whether it's three o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning, whether you're in you know, Switzerland on travel, trying to do business with the US government, doesn't really matter where you are. You're demanding greater quality of service. We're demanding reliability. We, don't, we, we want our businesses to know about us in ways that are helpful. We don't want to be faxing paper documents or emailing PDFs and sending emails and waiting for it to go into an, a queue that who knows who's going to be responding to it, if ever. And so what we're demanding is we're demanding this less friction from companies, governments, our systems, our devices, our data, and our apps. And to do that requires bringing into these organizations some of the cognitive stuff that has not previously been addressable. So we've just explained what people are demanding and expecting, but how do organizations really deliver this? And what can we do with an intelligent machine? We're starting to see, you know, we can achieve greater levels of productivity. We can also improve accuracy and reliability. No longer do we need humans to go in and do dull and demeaning tasks, unsafe tasks. We can send a robot in, or we can have robotic processes that are doing things. We can also work on a much greater scale than we could before and do more with less resources. Everybody's resource trapped these days. What can we do with cognitive technologies? Right. And so the intelligent machine, what we've seen is that people uh, expect a wide range of things from systems that can do things autonomously to machines that can understand images and text and video to systems that can basically have conversations with us in the language that we like to talk, not in the language of computers, and identify things for us and help predict and help us make decisions and figure out goals. This is what we want from our intelligent machine, and this is what we want from the organizations that leverage that cognitive technology. As Ron mentioned, artificial intelligence has been around for quite some time. But to understand the common understanding of AI, the definition that we use is artificial intelligence is machine behavior and function that exhibits the intelligence and behavior of humans. And so what that means is that we want some of the things that we have traditionally relied on people to do. We want machines to have some of those capabilities. And of course, as Kathleen and I mentioned earlier, AI has been around for a long time. So why is it that now all of a sudden we have this resurgence in interest and demand from intelligent machines with machine learning and artificial intelligence? And of course, there are three things that have really pushed us to where we are now. First, it's not only the presence and availability of lots of data, big data, but it's also we now have experience and tools and technology and resources and infrastructure to deal with that big data. And that gives us the power that we need to process the requirements for making machines really truly intelligent. Of course, the second thing is we've had an evolution in the technology that we've used to make intelligence out of all this data, of course, powered by deep learning, but in other algorithms. And of course, the third thing is we have almost limitless 
I don't mean free, but we have almost limitless computing power at our fingertips that we can use to solve and crunch through some of these harder problems and build these machine learning models that have a significant amount of power. We've also seen a lot of large companies such as Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Netflix, Amazon, and many others heavily investing in artificial intelligence. Some companies are going so far as to call themselves an AI first company because they think that this technology is so important and so transformational. We've also seen countries investing in AI. Countries such as China, China's getting a lot of press lately for their AI initiatives, mostly around their facial recognition and social scoring. China wants to become a world leader in AI in 2030, which isn't that far away. South Korea, France, Germany, England, and many, many other countries are starting to have AI plans because they see such strategic value in this technology.